Welcome everybody. I'm Emma Martins from Teresa Street. I am the head of community partnership and I am here today with New Bedford Star Kids, the organization we are partnering with for our Teresa Street Wiffle Ball Tournament Summer Classic, which is July um, 14th to the 16th. This year we are expanding. We have 16 teams playing and all of our money raised will be going to you all. So I'm so excited to sit down with you and hear about your organization. I know that um, I've already done some research and I'm so eager to hear about what you guys have to say about it, how it started and how everyday operations look like. So, like I said, I'm Emma Martins. I am a teacher. I teach fourth grade, or I used to teach fourth grade. I just finished teaching in Miami-Dade Public Schools. I taught three years there, and now I'm looking to start my career here in the South Coast. So, education is my absolute, absolute passion, so I love working and hearing with programs like yours that really uplift education and help our students. So, if you would love to introduce yourself, we can go one at a time. Great. Tim, why don't you start? Sure. I'm an infectious disease doctor, but as part of my work, I've done a clinic in the prisons for almost 30 years. And it became clear that breaking the cycle of incarceration, substance use disorders is just so key. And there's a way it can be done. And that's through outstanding educational opportunities. And we found great schools in New Bedford and in other communities that work beautifully with our schools. And we said, gosh, we've got to be able to make a difference here. So let's develop a public-private partnership and let's try and make a real difference here and with these kids. And so that's how Star Kids was founded. So you'll hear more about it in a minute. Thank you. I am Laura Oliveira. Um, my background is I have been a enrollment manager at colleges and universities my whole career. I spent almost 20 years as the chief enrollment officer at Salve Regina University in Newport, Rhode Island. And I also am now um, consulting with institutions that serve underrepresented students and students that have disadvantaged backgrounds um, and helping them provide the infrastructure and the support. Almost 20 years ago, um, I met Tim and heard of the initial Star Kids program in Newport and Fall River through my work at Salve and realized that they were branching out into New Bedford. I had a long commute to Salve because I live in the greater New Bedford area and I'm a native of the South Coast and I was thrilled because I knew that New Bedford had so much need um, for a program like this. So I joined as a sponsor. And then I became a board member. And now I am the president of the board working closely with Tim and Ellen and our board because we feel this institution has local impact and the success and the local nature of it. It has, it's what keeps me going. So nice to meet you. And thank you for your support from Teresa Street. Of course. Hi, Emma. I'm Ellen Loff, and I started out also teaching. I taught inner city middle school students, and I absolutely loved it. And then after that, for about 20 years, I worked as an admission and financial aid director, and I loved the financial aid piece of it. I loved making education accessible to all socioeconomic um, levels, um, of students. And then after that, I did that for about 20 years. I ended up at New Bedford Star Kids Scholarship Program. And I have been here since 2014 as the executive director. And it's been amazing, almost a decade now being here, watching the program grow from about two, uh, 62 students to now 133 students um, here in New Bedford. So it's been quite a run and, and I've really enjoyed being here and I'm really excited to partner with you guys. Yes, that's awesome. So I, I read that your the first year was 2000, right? And you guys started out with what, six kids it was? And now to hear 130 plus, that's incredible. So would somebody like to mention the mission of Star Kids? Like for somebody listening, how would how does it look like? So what what exactly is Star Kids serving? Well, the key is to break the cycle. And unfortunately, kids that have families that have been impacted by 
incarceration or severe substance use disorders, and they almost always go hand in hand together, those kids are really up against very tough, tough odds. Um, for example, in Rhode Island, in the training school, 75% of the kids that are adolescents in the training school, essentially in incarcerated settings there, have had a parent that's incarcerated. And so in order to break it, you've really got to give kids hope. You've got to work with a educational system that really feels that by caring and investing in the child, you can make a huge difference. But that's not enough. You often need to get a little extra help with tutoring, summer programs, mm -hmm. and it's this personal touch. So that if a student doesn't show up at school, somebody calls up and goes, whoa, what's going on here? What's happening? A lot of our uh, private or faith-based schools are extraordinary because they're K through eight or sometimes K through 12. So they provide a community which is small and very, very caring. It's almost like a big family in some of these schools. Everybody knows everybody and everybody really counts. Yeah. Now, for most of our families, this would never have been a possibility. So the goal is to try and help these kids break that cycle by giving them those opportunities. Now, what's a star kid? Always a star kid. So many of our star kids also go to New Bedford Vote, yeah. for example, or to Bristol Ag. So there are public and charter schools that work with us as well. But typically kids will start in a private or faith-based school and then go where it suits them best. And the goal is graduation from high school and then going on to higher education or trade school or um, other excellent opportunities. It can be, for example, military and so forth. Yeah, And the support we provide for these students we offer tuition support through sponsors, especially in the lower grades. And as Tim mentioned, some students, whether it's for family reasons, for a variety of reasons, choose to move on to a public school and we do not um, abandon them. We offer things like driving lessons, tutoring, technical support. People are like, well, there's no tuition. How can they be a star kid? You know, we connect them to summer job opportunities, help them with whatever they need to do. It, as Alan will speak later, it's all about enrichment. And it's also about supporting a family. Tim talks about breaking the cycle. Our families are often left with single parents, but increasingly we see grandparents raising their grandchildren. We've heard family stories of a woman knocks on the door at midnight and her niece and nephew are on the doorstep with a police officer. And she has all of a sudden become a parent within one day. It's a chaotic situation. Um, as we often say, opioids do not discriminate. We have a range of family situations and what is common to them all is chaos. And what we try to do is be an island of normalcy, primarily for the child or children, but also for the caregivers to take that anxiety off of their shoulders. So that's kind of the supplemental mission behind the primary goal. And as we've grown, we've been able to increase support. And then COVID just threw another curveball. And our students and families were impacted 10 times more than all of us were. And we were able to kick into gear. Um, Ellen and her team delivered Chromebooks to students that couldn't access Zoom class, um, you know, to offer the tutors, to build that underpinning that they need. It's not just being in the school. These are students that require surrounded support and we are providing that and committed to doing so. That's really awesome, especially the the family support. I know that um, I also taught in inner city. So a lot of the times, like you're saying, it is grandparents and aunts and uncles in there just so disconnected from the schools and have gone out so long ago. So it's really important to like show them how now this is this is a norm and this is how it's operating. And here's how you can get these questions to uh, these answers to the questions you had. That's awesome. Um, I know you spoke a lot about enrichment. Ellen, would you like to touch on that? Yes, yeah, so enrichment is including summer programs and after school programs. And we were talking a little bit of how we would use the funds that 
you would provide us after this fun wiffle ball tournament. And I was saying earlier before Tim, you got on here that in the spirit of this wiffle ball tournament, which sort of originated from the Teresa Street Friends playing during the summer and having these wonderful memories of growing up in the carefree days of just summer days of playing outside and enjoying the good old, you know, outdoors and no technology and hanging out. Um, we want our kids to get out of the house, have a traditional camp experience, whether it's, you know, canoeing or sailing or sitting around a campfire or just doing a sport they love, such as football or, um, you know, theater, doing theater. And we started about two years ago, um, really looking at, you know, kind of coming up with strategic plan in different areas of our organization. And one of the things we felt was really important was that for, for many years, we had provided a stipend um, of $300 for each child to go to summer camp. But we were fortunate that a lot of the camps we partnered with were also supplementing that with scholarships. So $300, you know, doesn't get more than a week typically of camp. But fortunately, you know, for example, like the community boating center and other places, um, some of the YMCA camps would provide a couple more weeks. But we felt like we wanted our students to not have to leave after a week or two. If they wanted to do six weeks or eight weeks, right. we wanted them to be able to have that continuity of the whole summer, being involved and in staying with that program. So about two years ago, we, um, we decided we were going to go up to $900 with a day camp. And we were going to, for the first time ever, allow students who wanted to um, do an overnight camp and provide up to $2,000. And again, we were hoping that they would get a scholarship. So it wouldn't be 2000 because we could go through our budget pretty fast. Um, so we have, um, seven students doing overnight camp this summer. Wow. And we had six last summer. Actually, we, we were going to probably have eight because we're working on another one. And, and we're, I'm pleased to say that we didn't have to do 2000 for not one of those students. Every single one got a scholarship. That is so awesome. And our budget this summer has gone up 54% from last summer. So we're funding 54% um, higher, you know, our, you know, our budget um, in our, um, for our summer camps and for our after school programs this year, we went up 30%. So all of our money is going into our, you know, the bulk of our money, all of our um, budget goes into our program. Most of our budget goes into our program expenses versus our administrative expenses. But but to have our actual camp expenses go up 54 percent, it was so exciting to, to see that figure in our after school, which can be anything from dance to piano lessons to um you know, sports lessons, it's the same concept of the summer, get the kids outside or get them doing an activity they love instead of sitting home inside. So the money we would use from this wiffle ball tournament would be to get kids doing summer programs outside, having and fun. Double your budget. Donate. Yes. Yes. Double yes. The budget. Being the kids being what they should be able to, you know, doing what they should be able to do and not worrying about the chaos inside their homes and, yeah. and not, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of parents in general tend to use uh, electronics and television as babysitters. Yeah. And the, our parents, like many parents are working all the time. So this also provides childcare opportunities for parents too. So they can work and not worry about who's going to take care of their children. So that's how we would use the funds to, to be able to, and we're in June right now, by the way. So we're already up 54% and 30% and it's still June, although we have signed up, you know, most of our kids at this point are signed up. We're still getting a lot more for, you know, we're still going to have a lot more who request funds for July and August. So now we can do this comfortably knowing we have these, um, additional funds coming in this summer. 
That's awesome. So I know you just mentioned um, requesting funds. So if a family, if a family has a star kid or star kids, do they kind of come to you guys and say, I want to enroll my child in summer camp? Or is it more of like you reach out and you're like, let's look at these opportunities, anything spike your interest? Oh, they're so they're in our program, they're enrolled in our program. And we send them, we start sending e blasts out in um, March, beginning of March, end of February with lists of opportunities um, that uh, camps and programs that we've already had students at, or they've already gone to um, of where they suggestions of places they can go to. And some are repeating going to similar, you know, the same place they've gone to every summer. And then and we sign them up. Um, so they don't have to they honestly, our families do not have the resources to be able to pay for these camps up front. So we sign, we pay for it. We sign them up. Um, and our, my administrative assistant, Katie works with the family to fill out and, and not to mention some of these applications are daunting and they have to get in their health forms. So she, she's amazing. She sits with the families, she signs them up. She, she pays online. A lot of it, I'd say 95% are online. It's almost unheard of now to do a paper application and send it in. Um, so she fills them, she does them online, pays with the credit card, um, gets them all set, make sure they get all their forms in because they have to have health forms, emergency, um, you know, release forms and, all, you know, a lot of different forms. And every once in a while, we will have a parent who signs up on, his or her own, and then we reimburse them right away. Um, and we just keep sending out reminders. And um, there are so many, the, the amazing thing is there are so many parents um, or grandparents, guardians, who ask the child go back and do the same program, which is great to hear all the time that, you know, they loved it and they want to do it again. And so. it, I mean, it really helps build that community that we were talking about of going to the same camp each summer. I know, especially like those sleepover camps really tend yep. to get the same people. So it really helps to foster those relationships. And with yes. the sleepaway camps, it was often the first time these six children had left New Bedford. Mm -hmm. So it was building a whole community, but also opening their eyes to, to a new environment and adjusting to something completely different from their their reality there's so many dimensions to this yeah and that sense of independence we we talked a lot about that um I, we took our kids on a big field trip and it was just like even at the rest stop ordering dunkin donuts was something brand new to our fifth graders and it was like this is such a small field trip that wouldn't cost a lot but really is building those life skills so really important skills um, I know you guys talked about starting in um, Newport and Fall River. What are the communities that you serve now and communities that you see um, star kids really pulling a lot of weight in or really getting a lot of children from? So our obviously our largest community is New Bedford. That's where we have most of our um, students from. And it's definitely the parameter of New Bedford, all of the towns that surround it, like Dartmouth and Fairhaven, um, Mattapoisett, um, Westport, um, Akushnet, all of the Middleborough, Lakeville, all of those towns around there, Taunton, we've been expanding there. We've been really seeing a need on Cape Cod. Um, there, there is a big opioid crisis right now on Cape Cod. Um, we are more than willing to expand to different um, communities in southeastern Massachusetts, and we have been. We've been um, going to different schools that um, we haven't had students at before. So um, we have a couple of the last two school years, we've added a couple of new schools in. We've we've gone, we've looked at the schools and We've really liked them and we've been happy to partner with them. So we'll start out with a couple of students each year. And if we are really excited about the school and feel like they're a good match for our students, we've added on a, a you know a couple more in subsequent years. Um, but the bulk is has been New Bedford for sure. Yeah. And the basics, the Newport Fall River program is a sister organization. Um, it was Tim's first star kids. They serve um, Aquidneck Island and Fall River. 
And when we started in 2000, we spun off into our own organization. So each program is completely self-sustaining with its own administration, but we are sister organizations. So Ellen will interact with the director there. Um, But what we found in New Bedford is New Bedford is so unique. Um, It did not have the municipal support and philanthropic organizations that Newport had. We were, we often call ourselves gritty. We were local. We were gritty. We just kind of scrapped it in. And as we grow, New Bedford is growing and thriving. The New Bedford of today is nothing like New Bedford Mm -hmm. was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, Businesses community leaders, they've all been empowered and they're working together in a way that wasn't happening two decades ago. So we have been along for an incredible ride of renaissance and change. Um, There's so much to be done, but I think that the greater New Bedford community has to be so proud of what they've done. Um, And to see a nonprofit like Teresa Street helping a nonprofit like New Bedford Star Kids, that's that networking that is so unique to this area. And and we're just thrilled. um, Yes, definitely. We're so excited, too, to get connected, especially in New Bedford. Like you said, there's so many amazing programs that are like really low key, but doing such incredible work. So we're really excited to kind of get you guys out there so more people can see the work that you're doing. So I read in your annual report, um, some shout outs from alumni that you have. I was wondering how you guys stay connected with them and if any of your alumni kind of have um, come back to support or what that relationship looks like. Well, I have to give the example of a wonderful new Bedford student who started at second grade at St. Anthony's with our program, then went to Stang. And then he, because of his hard work and his educational uh, efforts, got a full scholarship at Notre Dame. And then he got a full scholarship at Brown Medical School. And he's now a cardiology fellow at Rhode Island Hospital. So I practice in the lifespan system. So he and I see each other there. And he was at our most recent gala where he wanted to thank his sponsor, the uh, McLeans, Biff McLean and Mary Jane McLean. And they really became such good friends. And he turned around and made a significant donation himself. So wow, it was quite awesome. remarkable. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, it's really due to his hard work. Star Kids is a small part of that. But we were able to give him that initial oomph and help. He wouldn't have, his mom couldn't have sent him to St. Anthony's. And that opened a world for him. And then we have to support our partner schools like Stang. We only provide part of the tuition, really only about half. They provide the other half. And so, but they really did such a beautiful job and he worked so hard and wow, he soared. But our our star kids are working really at many different spots. A lot of them will go to BCC or to UMass Dartmouth. And those are wonderful schools that really can help them get their feet underneath them and move on to a great job. So really pleased. But Ellen, take it away in terms of the alumni. Yeah, it's funny you said that because I was last night kind of racking my brains over this one. We do um, know we have all their contact information. We have social media, you know, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have all of them, as many as we can connected to them on, um, you know, on these platforms. And I was talking to one of our students. um, Her name is Sadie Resendez. And she um, actually, it's a great example of, when we have a student who she went to our sister's school um, in middle school and then went on to New Bedford Vogue. So it's a great opportunity of someone we did not give a scholarship to um, in high school, but we supported in so many different ways. So during the pandemic, we helped her by providing a laptop for her. She went into nursing. She's going to um, go to a junior college called Massasoit Community College. And she wants to get, um, she wants to become a radiologist technician. And she got her certificate and actually her mom sent it to me. 
um, as a certified clinical medical assistant. She did an internship all throughout um, her time in high school. And she sent me the cutest little selfie that the girl did. But we supported her by helping her with her equipment, her medical equipment. And, you know, I have all her info and I'm going to stay in touch. And uh, mm-hmm. she's an easy one. There's so many you get. I'm thinking of Olivia Bolarino, this girl who went to Bishop Stang. She she did this. She's in journalism. And there's so many kids we just you get so close with. You just stay connected with. But the ones that you don't build these relationships with. I was thinking about this. They go to college a lot, a lot. Um, you know, again, you have their contact info. They're on your e-blast. You, you know, you hear from their moms more than them. So you do kind of know, but I was kind of like, um, I wonder if, um, and we did, we've done care packages, we've done different things, but um, we we always know what a whole bunch of them are doing, but how do you get them to respond back to you? And I was kind of thinking, well, we could always do this thing when they're freshmen of if you if you come to this, if you respond back to us, we'll we'll get you a book for your second semester freshman year or something like that to get them back connected to us. I was thinking there are different ways to do it, you know, check in with us when you're in your second year of college and um you know, you can always get a college student to do something. We'll buy you a pizza. Tim has got a cup of coffee. I think we have to go a little further than that. Uh, if I, I think we'll think. consult with Emma in her communications background. You know, help yes. us out. <laughs> I'm, I'm very high in my bribery, too, so that can always help you out. <laughs> I think it's important to note that while college is a goal, it's not for all of our right, graduates. Right. We have students that are going to the firefighter academy, becoming EMTs. We had a student um, investigate going to school to learn how to build boats. You know, we take each child and we look at their aspirations, their interests. And for some, college is not in their in their wheelhouse and they're fine with that. We want to make sure they're employed, they're successful, and they're breaking the chain. The other thing that we did do is in conjunction with law enforcement, we did survey or check on all of our graduates for any indication that the cycle was not broken, you know, and that the powers of and the pull of this dysfunction and chaos. We had one or two instances where students um, ran afoul of the law. And that is with over a hundred graduates over 20 years. So it is a small fraction. And the fact that we had one or two just keeps it real to me. And it keeps the struggle and our mission front and center that it does take a village and it takes so much to break the cycle. If we had a hundred percent success rate, it almost makes it seem too easy. And we have to have constant reminders of what we're doing, but to have a one or 2% rate of of having that cycle take over is nothing. That means that we are breaking the cycle for 98 to 90% of our graduates. And that is pretty wild. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. All right. I I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I just have one final question for you all. If you could give a pitch to the community on how to support you more and get more involved, what would it sound like? And where would you blast it out to? Well, I have to give a big shout out to the Martins and Brahmin Leatherworks because early on they came to our assistance and they said, we want to make New Bedford Star Kids a thriving program. We don't want to have all these kids on the wait list. We want to accept them in these schools that have capacity to take them. We want to partner a school like our sister school. They need help with a lot of their kids when they graduate, going on to different high schools of their choice. So we really, we really want to shout out to them for making our program yes. so um, extraordinary. They've been phenomenal in that generosity. We want people to do what they think they can, what what they would like to do. So mm-hmm. some of our folks come to us and want to be tutors. Others want to, businesses want to help us provide internships for high school students. High school students, sometimes they don't want to go to camp. They want a job. They want to make some money and more power to them. That's a good thing. 
Yeah. Uh, our schools are phenomenal partnerships. And then individuals come to us and say, we're willing to sponsor a kid. We sponsor a child at about $4,000 for elementary and $7,000 for high school. But we also provide all this other support, which makes all the difference. So yeah. however folks can help, we want them to jump on board. And if they can't afford to be a sponsor, we are really looking for volunteers, you know, to help with tutoring, to just be a, a big buddy or to help with our fundraisers. We do the New Bedford Half Marathon. We do our annual gala. If you've got interest in event planning or art, anything, um, our kids need role models. Our kids need to know that they are valued um, and not just by the people they see in the office every day or in the school. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So I highly, highly encourage anybody watching to please visit newbedfordstarkids.org. Look at their website, do some research, look at their annual report. I think it would be really interested if we, if interesting, if we could get some um, physical copies of the annual report to have that weekend of our wiffle ball tournament put in the hands of our donors and really help them to see the impact that they all helped produce. Um, Laura, Ellen, and Tim, thank you so much for coming and speaking with me today. Uh, our Wiffle Ball Tournament is the 14th to the 16th of July. Check out our website to see the whole list of events for the weekend. We have a lot packed into it, a lot of fun, and I really appreciate talking with you. I always feel inspired by these conversations, and it's so nice as a teacher to know that there's organizations that have our backs and have our students' backs and really are doing such important work. So thank you again. I appreciate it. And thank you for speaking with me. Thank you, Emma. Thank Thanks, you. Emma. Teresa Street.